Welcome to another episode of Getting Fresh Air. In this video, we take on a two-day trip around the Big Frog Loop that straddles the Tennessee and Georgia border. The Big Frog Loop is a 70-mile loop shown in red here and is part of the Georgia Traverse. We traveled clockwise around the loop with the blue being our day one route and the red being our day two route. The day before we set out on this loop, we staged and camped at the Thunder Rock Campground on the Koi River. We made a video review of that campground and we'll put the link in the description below and at the end of this video. Right outside the entrance of the campground is Forest Service Road 45. This Forest Service Road is about a two mile feeder road that takes you to the north side of the Big Frog Loop. If you've watched our videos before, you know that we enjoy camping and taking our Jeep off-road, but we've never really combined the two and taken our trailer truly off-road or overlanding. You also may notice that I take a lot of the pictures in the video while my wife is the one that's actually driving off-road in most of our videos. So this trip served multiple purposes for us. One, we're checking out the Big Frog Loop. Two, we wanted to see how the trailer was gonna perform uh, off-road. And then three, see how my wife could handle driving the trailer off-road. I think you'll agree as you watch through this video that we found all three to be very successful. As you get to the end of Forest Service Road 45, you come to the T intersection and you have the decision of going left and clockwise around the loop or right and counterclockwise. We decided to go clockwise. Oh, the campfire ring like somebody just came right there. Right there. We found the roads on the Tennessee side of the trail to be a little rough. Not anything technical, but just rough, which made it slow rolling, especially with the trailer. If you've done this trail before, we'd like to hear your thoughts on the conditions of the trails. Our perspective, we found that the Tennessee side was very rough and there was a distinct di difference once you passed into Georgia and the trail smoothed out. On the Big Frog Loop, there's a handful of little creek crossings, but this was the largest one that we found on the entire loop. Yeah, this was mid-April in the south, but we still ran into a little bit of sleet and snow flurries and some very cold weather on the first day. Around the loop, you'll find three or four established campgrounds and many dispersed camping spots.
prior to this trip, there was a storm that came through and blew down a lot of trees. The trail overall was clear and we didn't have to cut any trees, but there were a lot of low hanging trees here and there. There's a lot of little waterfalls and pull offs around the loop and this one was a great one to stop and stretch our legs, let the dogs out and grab some lunch. first day we decided to stay at the ball field uh, group camp. This is a large field that can handle multiple uh, camping sites whether you're in vehicles or hiking. Uh, it is on obviously on the Big Frog Loop, it also is on the Georgia Traverse and there are uh, multiple hiking trails that intersect here. So sometimes it can get busy but it's a large field that can handle a lot of camping and the best part is it's a free campsite. On this day, it was pretty windy in the ball field, making it very cold. So we had dinner, watched the sunset, and called it an early night. The next morning, we were greeted with a beautiful sunrise, but a frosty 28 degrees. We basically had coffee, a light breakfast, packed up camp, and got on the trail right away. This was going to be a long day for us because not only were we finishing the second half of the Big Frog Loop, we were also heading all the way back home to Alabama, which is about a three hour drive once we got off the trail. You can see here the trail in and out of the ball field camping area is a little rutted up, but we had no problem even with the trailer. The entrance of the ball field camping area also serves as a parking area for the trailheads. You can see here, even on an early Sunday morning, there's a lot of people here already to go on a hike. Our second day turned out to be much more sunny and it started out cold but it warmed up quickly.
some of the areas on the west side of the loop, we found the trails got wide enough for two-way traffic passing with no problems. We also found some far, farm pastures uh, that was a lot different scenery than on the day before on the east side of the trail. second day we found a much larger waterfall to stop and have lunch by. There were trees down in front of it from the previous storm but it was still a really nice spot to stop. Here's our left hand turn to exit back out on the Forest Service Road 45, completing the Big Frog Loop. Well, how do you think she did towing the trailer off road? I think she did amazing, and it definitely boosted both of our confidence in bringing the trailer off road like this. And we look forward to now taking the trailer with us on the entire Georgia Traverse, which is about 390 miles long in the coming month. If you've done the Big Frog Loop or the entire Georgia Traverse, we'd like to hear about your experiences with it. Well, that completes another adventure. Always check our description below for more information and links. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to our channel. And as always, we'll see you next time getting fresh air.